Hello everyone, my name is Ninoa and welcome to my unhurried playthrough of Final Fantasy XIV – A Realm Reborn Part 16.1. So this video is going to be the start of a fairly long stretch of MSQ. We are going to complete two mini arcs in a row, each uh, comprised of two videos. The one that we are going to start now is going to take us from the Shroud to Sunland and back. Essentially, these are really the two areas that we are going to explore with this, starting in Gridania. As for spoilers, I strongly recommend you catch up on the MSQ up to and including the Total Rack Dungeon before you proceed as some spoilers are unavoidable otherwise. As always, I'll alert you to spoilery scenes. And without further ado, let's go! And so the first order of the day is to return to Gridania. And we are heading for the Grand Company headquarters as we need to speak with Vosail Holois to get us started on our next MSQ. Level 24, back from the wood. Commander Holois appears to have more to say. The rewards are 7920 points of experience. 1,201 gil and some extra Vesper Bay Etherite tickets. Hmm, that could come in handy. The Selfic folk have long been friends to Gridania. The mere thought of being at war with them pains the elder Sitsir to no end. But owing to your efforts, she will be able to rest easier. Being the benevolent soul that she is, my lady will surely try to find a way to reverse the tempering process. Once again, I thank you. Had the science of the Seventh Stone not offered to mediate between our people, suspicion and doubt may well have led us into needless conflict. Pray pass on my regards to Lady Minfilia. Speaking of which... Hello? Hello, Ninua? Can you hear me? It is I, Minfilia. Ida and Papalimo returned some little while ago, and they wasted no time in regaling me with a tale of your exploits. Thanks in large part to you, the name of one primal may be struck from our list of enemies, and the Gridanians may turn their attention to more pressing matters. Well done. Yet the end of one tale is but the start of another. Pray return to the waking sands at your earliest convenience. I would apprise you of the present situation in person. And as you can see, Vosel Holwa still has that a pop no longer quest, which unlocks one of the PvP instances. So as you can see, there is a blue quest here near the Etherite, and we'll return to it in the next video. But for now, let's head to Vesper Bay. Obviously, I could have used one of the Vesper Bay Etherite tickets that I still have, um, especially knowing we have 10 more on the way. But I'm going to take the scenic route.
So first thing first, we need to talk to Tataru. Well, if it isn't my favorite adventurer, welcome back, Ninoa. Lady Minfilia awaits you within the solar. Please enter at your leisure. I am given to understand that the matter of Ramu has finally been resolved. Huh. I fear resolved bespeaks a permanence we cannot rightly claim. Yet I am well satisfied that the Lord of Levin will not trouble us in the foreseeable future. Your satisfaction is assurance enough to me. How fares the investigation? Well enough. Thancred is sparing no effort. There are many and one, just as you suspected. Their purpose, however, eludes us still. I see. Ah, I have been meaning to ask, but is Alice quite well? I feel as if I have scarcely seen her in recent days. Oh, you haven't. And nor have I, alas. Alize has chosen to walk her own path, stubborn girl, but you may be assured that our destination remains the same. And on that note, I take my leave of you. I trust the Baldesian report will serve you well. I take it we can proceed as discussed. Why do you ask? You scarce need my permission to act. It is good to see you again, Ninoa. Why am I not surprised to meet Alfino here? <laughs> I have been looking forward to congratulating you on your triumph in the Twelfth Wood. Owing to your efforts, conflict has been averted. Truly, you have done the science proud. With that, we can strike Ramu from the list. So, who's next? The Sahagin and Leviathan? The Lord of the World has not answered his minion's call of late nor is he expected to do so in the near future. While the Sahagin remain as aggressive as ever, they lack the quantity of crystals required to call forth their god. As with the Sylphs, we can leave them to their own devices. For a time, at least. For a time bears repeating, we can ill afford to fall complacent. It is as Ishtola says, unless we know the minds of the beast tribes, we cannot predict with any certainty when next a primal will return to plague the land. This being the case, we must proceed with as much haste as prudence allows. Any word on Titan? The maelstrom keeps the cobalts under constant observation. We shall hear from them ere long. You may depend upon it. Indeed. So then, of all the known primals that have been active in recent times, we are left with... Gridania! Wait, I meant Gr Garuda, who is a primal of the Ixel who lived near Gridania. Yes, that's what I meant. So many moms to cover, without there were a more efficient way to conduct our service. Were he still with us, we should not long to have wanted for a more practical solution. She's not wrong there. Where in the world are you, chief? I'm not sure they're speaking of the same person, anyways. But one shall sure step at a time. Henceforth, the Order of the Twin Adder will handle all matters pertaining to the Sylphs under the sage guidance of the Seed Seers. 
I bet you all enjoy the moment's respite. You have earned it. Please note the next bit of the conversation includes spoilers for the main story. If that bothers you, please jump to spoiler cut 1 or to the 12 minute 6 seconds mark. Is there something else, Ninoa? Back pardon? A man named La Habrea, sporting a red mask and robed in black? Twelve preserve. Prior to the calamity, the Asians took great pains to remain hidden. Why would they choose to cast off their veil of secrecy now? Gods, this boat's ill. We must take advantage of the present lull in primal hostilities and investigate this La Habrea. Learn all we can of him and his designs. I dread to think. Eek! Tataru! I recognize that noise. Yep. Well, sh she is far from home. A self in Sanalan? At long last, this one finds walking one Ninoa. This one is most dependable of these ones. Is sent by Elder One Frexio to help walking ones. This one is called Noraxia. This one comes as a friend. Let these ones be friends. Pleasure to meet you, Noraxia. All right, so we are going to speak to the different people here because things have changed around now. Wait a minute, I know you. The carriage into Gridania, right? It's me, Bremont. How in the hell did you end up here, lass? Ah, never mind. You can tell me later. I've got to ask you something first. This might sound strange, but you haven't by chance seen a fella what looks exactly like me? I'm looking for my twin brothers, see, and I heard they might have come through here. Oh, they could be dead for all I know. At least it feels like I've been chasing ghosts for an eternity now. Oh, don't worry, they're alive and well. Shamu can't communicate that to him now. Greetings, Sion. I come on behalf of the students of Baldesian. You may address me as Clive. Is there some reason you are still here? Please carry on. I am not here to see you. Well, I guess we've been summarily dismissed. <laughs> as you have dubbed as witnessed in your travels, the lands of Eorzea are gasping at the pale of a suffocating darkness. I must wonder if it is this darkness that invites disaster, or simply that disaster has left such gloom in its wake. One thing is for certain, now is not the time to relax our vigilance. Oh, she's probably right at that. I'm starting to wonder if it is worth the hassle to prove who we was. I mean, Maybe some folk would say, good on you, mate, thanks for fighting to save Eorzea and what not. But I reckon most would ask what we've done for them lately, if not spit in our faces for allowing Bahamut to blow up half the goddamned world. Now as though the import of the broken staff within the solar, it fell from the grasp of Archon Louisois, the man who, in his abiding love for all the Eorzeans, shitted us against the storm of the calamity. The stars wheel across the heavens and the skies brighten once more. The survivors gather and ignite a fiery dawn to burn away the glowering shroud. 
Ah, uh, but destiny, thou art beautiful. In recent days, I have resumed my training. It'll end, make for idle minds, and painful memories are all too quick to resurface. And she's not alone now, so that's good too. There are two types of Alamigans. Fools, who wish to fight back, but know not how, and cowards, who have chosen to run from their worries. The young man over there is a striking example of the former. Me? I'm the latter. Or couldn't you tell? Walking ones from Ulda have not seen these ones before. This one knows. Uh, still, most walking ones make such screaming sounds when seeing this one's face. This one cannot get a wink of rest. Look, Noraxia, I realize that this makes no sense to you, but you must try to be more discreet. Years ago, a law was enacted in Ulda whereby... Uh, please, just trust me and stay out of sight. Noraxia and I both wear a mask. We are going to get along famously, I just know it. I'm to meet with the antecedent soon to discuss some matter of great import. Abba thinks it is about my first official mission. I suppose it would be good if it was, yes? I mean, I'm not sure if I'm ready, but still. A masked man? I vaguely recall some Amalja ranting about something like that in the middle of a skirmish. Course I wasn't listening too closely on account of the fact their friends were trying to kill me. I don't mean to waste your time, friend, but that's the only thing that comes to mind. People in masks cannot be trusted, but Pix and I wear masks all the time when welding. <sighs> if only Master Garland were still with us. He was a brilliant man full of life and purpose. Kind and generous, he taught us everything we know about engineering. Though believe me, he could also be a very hard person to please. He would force us to completely rebuild devices if even a single flaw was discovered. I can only imagine what he'd say if he saw the tiny Bronco. Well, to be fair, you can't really afford to make any mistakes where you building flying transports because of the risks for other people. That reminds me of that quest with Brizel where we had to craft rivets. Okay, so there are going to be additional spoilery discussions incoming. Um, if that bothers you, please jump to Spoiler cut 2 or to the 21 minutes 38 seconds mark. Yes, Dataru is as ready to express her fright as she is to express everything else. Not all of us are forged of the same steel as you, I'm afraid. But it takes all kind to make a family, and it pleases me to no end to see ours continue to grow. One by one, the people of Eorzea are beginning to unite, Ninoa, drawn to the hope that shines within you. Yet the darkness threatens to engulf this light. Never have I doubted the Asians' presence, but that they have grown so brazen as to carry out their work in plain sight fills me with a sense of deep foreboding. And we've just unlocked a new achievement related to the story, Back from the Wood. Level 24, Shadow of Darkness. Minfilia would have you investigate the mysterious La Habrea. The rewards are 7,920 points of experience and 1,201 gil.
I am afraid there is no rest for the weary, Ninua. We must delve further into the motivations of the masked man, the Asian known as La Habrea. This is an ideal moment to do so, while our hands are not bound dealing with another primal. At present we know little and less about the Asians, only that destruction follows in their wake. I should not be surprised if these beings are behind the chaos that wracks the realm. If my fears prove to be reality, we must do all in our power to stop them. Earlier, I sent word to each grant company to solicit cooperation. The immortal flames responded to the effect that they have information on the potential sighting. This is intelligence that we can ill afford to ignore. Go speak with Flame Commander Swift at the Hall of Flames in Ulda to inquire further. How you go about the investigation thereafter, I leave wholly to your discretion. But whatever you do, never forget that we are dealing with the unknown. You cannot take too many precautions. Be safe, Ninua. All right, so for those of you who passed over the spoilers, just be aware that we concluded the previous quest and now have started a new one that, as you have heard, is going to take us to Ulda. And basically we are looking for a masked man. And this is all I'm going to say about it. <laughs> All right, so from here, teleport to Ulda. Remember, I have both Ulda and Limsa Luminsa as favorite destinations, which have the price. And very helpfully, the Grand Company of Ulda is right next to the Aetherite. The Masked Man? Ah, you are come on behalf of the science, of course. Yes, as we've already relayed to Lady Minfilia, there has been a sighting of this rogue near about Eastern Sunderland. A breastblade stationed at Highbridge described him in detail when he, he alerted us to suspicious activity. I would point you to the witness, but I'm afraid he died not two days ago, slain by a marauding horde of Kirkin. Fate can be a cruel mistress. But do not be too quick to despair. Being situated on a trade route, Highbridge sees its fair share of travelers. Folk are always coming and going, and some among them may have caught a glimpse of your target. You could do worse than to speak with a merchant named Hihibato. The fellow's always starved for customers and he would no doubt welcome your attention, whether or not you have coined all the mind to spend it. Well, I do have some coin. I have a bit more than a quarter of a million. Which isn't too bad, is it? Compared to what we had a few videos ago. Alright, so. Eastern Sunland it is then. The High Bridge area is an area we haven't visited yet, though. It's situated east of Drybone. Alright, so I am just going to check a bit my Chocobo's appearance. I'm going to probably switch a few things around. So that's the barding I've obtained with my achievements certificates from Janathas. And that's the default. I'm going to do a mix of both, I think. Here we go. 
All right, so I'm going to see you when we get to the Eastern Salon. And as you can see, I am following the MSQ check mark on the minimap, which got me to cross all of Drybone. And in the northeast, you have this area called High Bridge. And waiting for us is Hihi Battle. Welcome to High Bridge, adventurer. Whatever you seek, I, Hihi Battle, can provide it. Probably. <laughs> you are after a masked man? Hmm, I'm not sure I have one of those in stock. Oh, you are after a masked man. Why did you not say so sooner? Such an individual might have featured in one of the many rumors I've heard. If you linger a while, mayhap you'll learn a thing or two, eh? I see what you did here, Hihibaru. Level 24, High Bridge Times. Hihibaru wants to help you find La Habrea. Maybe. The rewards are 7,920 points of experience and three Solomon Pink Dye. When the Order of Nalt Tal began excavating the ruins below, I had hopes that Highbridge would turn into a bustling herb for pilgrims. But thanks to the nigh endless Beastman raids, folk are too afraid to come within a mile of here. I sold everything I owned to get my venture started and I'm loath to give up without making an earnest effort to stick it out. But if things keep going as they are, I'll be bankrupt before the moon is through. Winning won't do me any good though. No, for my business to survive, I need business. Speaking of which, perhaps you'd like to browse me wares. Spend a bit of coin to help a struggling merchant. The masked man? Bah! Tal, take your bloody masked man. I know what I said before, but vague rumors are all I've got. If you want to know about him, go and ask the other merchants. All right, all right, I'll do that. Aye, I've heard tell of the masked devil. Seems he's been appearing not only around Highbridge, but elsewhere about Thunderland too. Enough folk have reported seeing him to convince me he's more than a figment of the imagination, but little is known about him otherwise. And the other two merchants are going to be situated further up the bridge. On the trail of a masked man? Aye, I've heard of him, but only in hushed tones and faint whispers. It is said he wears a black hooded robe and looks right suspicious. And that's about all I can say, little though it is. I was about to say thanks for being so unhelpful, but they cannot tell me what they don't know, can they? Have I seen a masked man wearing a dark robe? No, I haven't, nor do I wish to. Business is bad enough without shady characters lurking about. Folk have been giving Highbridge a wide berth because of all the Kirkin raids. None but the most devout of pilgrims are willing to come here anymore. Well, that's not good. By the way, those Kirkin raids they are referring to, you can experience them for yourself uh, through a series of fates that happen right where I stand right now. Those are around level 20 something. I don't remember the exact level. Uh, be aware though that you will need to be at a higher level if you want to handle them on your own. And if you manage to complete the last of the series of raids successfully, you can come to this man, Chachamun, 
and he'll have a much longer list of items for sale, including a unique minion. Alright, so we are going to conclude the quest by speaking with Hihibado again. This place is just so pretty look at oh that was a beautiful bird too. With a quarter of the moon and the crystals. which are going to play um, an important role in side content once we've beaten 2.0 MSQ. But we'll talk about that later. Touching by your expression, I take it you didn't learn much of views. Look, I'm sorry for my rudeness earlier. It's just that things are tough for us merchants at the moment. The Kirkin raids are so constant, so organized, we're beginning to suspect that someone is orchestrating it all. I tend to put my own welfare first, like most of us do, but that doesn't mean I am a bad person. I promise to keep an eye out for your masked man. If I see or hear anything, you'll be the first to know. Level 25. Well, there is smoke. Hihibaru has information that will surely lead you to Lahabrea. The rewards are 8,160 points of experience and 1,516 gil. I finally got some honest to God's information on your masked man. Why so confident? Because I saw him with my own two eyes. I was out for an evening stroll, minding my own business, when I noticed a column of smoke rising from a cliff over at Thal's respite. Curious, I took myself there to find a masked man, your masked man, I'm sure of it, standing by a fire. As if in answer, some Kirkin appeared soon after, and the group began talking at length. I'm afraid I was too far out of earshot to hear much of anything. After the group had dispersed, an idea came to me. If you were to use this smoldering coal to start a fire, you might be able to arrange a similar meeting. It will be dangerous, I should not doubt, but you've proven yourself more than a match for a pack of rats. So what do you think? That's some sound, reliable information, even if I do say so myself. Well worth the lingering about you've been doing, wouldn't you say? Well, he's optimistic all of a sudden, but yeah, he's right, that's a good... That's as good a hint as any. Alright, so... We're going to head to Thal's Respite, which is all the way northeast close to the exit leading to the South Shroud. Smoldering coal, a red hot piece of carbonized wood that, when placed on wet wood or leaves, will create a billowing tower of smoke that can be seen from malms. 
And look, we haven't got Kirk in here, we have got a Corpse Brigade food soldier. Interesting, because they come for a very specific area of Sunderland. Okay, let's report to Hihibado. While we are heading back, I'm going to check on the item we received after defeating the foot soldier. The Ward of the Destroyer, a paper ward inscribed with a prayer to the patron deity of Alamigo, Ralg. And the plot thickens. Back so soon? Were you able to find any clues leading to your masked man? <gasps> this scroll, it bears a prayer to Ralg, the destroyer. In case you are unfamiliar, Ralg is a guardian deity of Alamigo, which is currently under Galian rule. It is highly uncommon for folk of other nations to revere him. I'd wager my last kill that your assailant was Alamigan. It seems this masked man of yours is very well connected. I must confess, the merchant in me advised such a diverse network of contacts. That self-same merchant also senses danger ahead. And darkness besides. Are you certain you'd rather not take things nice and slow here at Highbridge? <laughs> But it's not so nice and slow here in Highbridge, Hihibaru, seriously. Level 25, on to little Alamigo. Hihibaru has a suggestion to help you with your investigation. The rewards are 8,160 points of experience, 1,516 gil, and sunset orange dye. The Alamigan bandit you had a run-in with is somehow connected to your masked man of mystery. So it stands to reason that if you want to pick up the trail again, you should head towards Little Alamigo, over in southern Sunland. Just so you know what to expect, the settlement is a favored destination for those refugees who couldn't, well, adapt to life in Ulda. The hearts of the denizens are said to be as barren as the westlands they live in, and for all intents and purposes, it's a lowless place. Be prepared for a not so warm welcome. Now, I'm not certain how much her help she will be, but it just so happens I have a daughter who has uh, relocated to Little Alamigo. Her name is Hihira, and it should not hurt to seek her out first. And while you have her attention, I'd be obliged if you could send my love. That the day goes by that I don't think of her. I suppose this is it, then. I had hoped that you would linger here a while, curl some fiends, spend some coin, what have you. But something tells me you are destined for greater things. Wherever it is you end up, I wish you the best. Ibaru is not a bad man at all, is he? Okay, let's talk to Helmhart and pick this quest. Level 24. Hair Club for Hure. Helmhart of Highbridge could use an adventurer's assistance with a hair raising problem. The rewards are 1980 points of experience, 1399 gil, and a choice between weak poisoning potion, weak blinding potion, or an Alagan bronze piece. You. Yes, you, adventurer, I need you to fetch three bottles of furball blood and do so with all haste. 
Where to find Ferber blood, you ask? Why, from Ferbals, of course. Now hurry, this is a matter of life and death. And Ferbals are found on the other side of the bridge. Also, furballs always make me think of tribbles, for those of you who know. <laughs> but they look like them a bit too, don't they? I have no idea if that was the uh, reference for creating the furballs, by the way. But uh, yeah. By the way, not too far from here, but a bit in a hidden area, there are much higher level creatures that look a lot like furballs. Which we will have to farm for crafting. But we'll come back for those much later. Oh no, let's finish the quest. Well, have you brought the verbal blood I asked for? If so, then hand it over and quickly now. Verbal blood. The deep crimson lifeblood of a void sent verbal. Remarkably, one of the hirsute creatures contains less than a half score of drops. At long last, my friend, you are godsend. Now, how did it go? Ah, yes. Stir twice, a dash of spittle, shake twice more, and voila! Well, what are you waiting for, friend? Grab yourself a dollop and start spreading. My scalp cries out for succor. Oh, and try not to miss a spot. Furball tonic, a potent potation containing the blood of a freshly slain furball, ground marino, and several other grotesque ingredients that are best left unspoken. Uh, well, he did speak about Spittle, didn't he? Ooh, ah, my, that tingles. Why, I can already feel my pores opening in no time at all. I'll have flowing locks of fun long. I can't thank you enough, friend. What with the sun beating down the way it does in these parts, a bald pate is a potentially fatal affliction. Oh! So it wasn't about... So it wasn't all about aesthetics. He actually wanted to grow a hair to avoid a heat stroke, basically. That makes sense. At least I haven't killed three creatures just for aesthetics purposes. So that's a bit more palatable. Okay, so now we have to head to Little Alamigo, which is in Southern Thunalan. And as luck would have it, we have an exit direct from Eastern Thunalan into Southern Thunalan. Here at Sungate. Alright, so we have been in Southern Sunland before, but that was for a very specific purpose. So Little Alamigo is 
inside this rock f formation. And here I have been aggroed by a sunskin baster. Now, as it happens, I am still here as Lancer, but as you can see, if I switch to Bard, it turns out Sunskin Paste are one of my hunting log targets. And I need to defeat five of those. Now, you need to be careful if you come here when you are under level 39. Because as you can see in the distance, there are two bigger specimen of paste. And although I could probably defeat them with the help of my chocobo, there's still a pain in the neck. Basically, they are much tougher versions of the same enemy as this size would attest to. Mostly tougher because they have a lot more HPs. They are defeatable, they're just annoying. So if I can avoid to aggro them altogether, I do so. And here I got two paste skins. That's going to be one type of leather that we're going to farm a little bit. Although it's not quite as popular as boar skins or the later raptor skins. This is a type of leather that will be included in crafting from level 38, I believe. So I've got a bit of time before it um, becomes useful. Okay, and we arrive at Little Alamigo. So as usual, I'm going to attune. And unlock the Chocobo Keep. Okay, so we have to find Hihira, who is just here in the encampment. Hmm? Why, yes, Hihibaru is my father. He said what? Oh, I wish I could be a better daughter to him. It's just that... Oh, I'm sorry. I should not bother you with family matters, but I am grateful to you for delivering the message. Now then... What brings you here? A masked man? I'm afraid the description doesn't ring any bells, but one of the others here may have seen something. I would recommend you first speak with Gundabald, the leader of the settlement. I must warn you, though, he isn't exactly accommodating to outsiders. Who are you? State your business and be quick about it. Looking for a masked villain, you say? And why should we help you, pray? We struggle enough without having to answer the whim of every outsider. You are not welcome here. Be gone. Well, at least that was clear and di we didn't waste any time. You know. We have to look at the bright side of things. But what do we do now? Well, as you can see, nobody around here has the next MSQ. We have to head back to the central area of Little Alamigo. 
and talk to Gizipart. Level 25, T for 3. Gizilbert would like to aid in your manhunt. The rewards are 8160 points of experience and a choice between Altered Velveteen Bandana, Headgear Disciples of War level 25, Silver Spectacles, Headgear or Classes level 25, or an elegant silver piece of a value of 500 gil. Well met, adventurer. I am Gizilbert. Head of security here at Little Alamigo. I heard tell that you had business with Gundobald. Knowing the brisly old bear, I don't doubt he told you to bugger off. Owing to their hardships, the refugees don't trust anyone but themselves. Not even my men and I can get so much as a word of thanks out of them, despite watching the place day and night. Well, that's rough. But thanks or no, I try to help my fellow man when I can, and you seem a decent sort. If you tell me what's brought you here, might be as I can lend a hand. On the trail for a masked villain, you say? Hmm. Can't say that sounds familiar, but I have men on lookout for Amalja to the south of here. If there's been any suspicious activity, they are like to have seen it. I had a mind to take them each a cup of sweet Thunalan tea so as to lift their spirits. If you were to run this little errand in my stead, they'd be all the more willing to tell you what they know. Back to errand girl, I, say, I guess. I suddenly have a feeling, yep, I'm going completely off track. Never mind. So, going to head back to where the soldiers are. Who the hell are you? I'm trying to conserve energy here, so leave me alone. Sweet Sunderland tea, a piping hot infusion of freshly picked young Sunderland tea leaves mixed with rich algal cream and a generous spoonful of golden cactua flower honey. Cream and milk have nothing to do with tea. It's sacrilegious. Well, and you considerate. My thanks, friend. What's that? A masked villain, hiding among the refugees, like as not. My compatriots as live here go about as though they are dead on their feet. It is near impossible to tell what's on their minds. For all I know, they are all up to no good. They are your compatriots and you talk about them like that? Ugh. With friends like that and all that. You there. Are you in a Malja? No? Then carry on. Ah, this sophisticated aroma. It has been forever since I had a drop of sweet Sunderland. I'm going to enjoy this. What? A masked man? Don't know, don't care. Unless he's got dark, scaly skin, stands ten forms tall and has the face of a lizard, then I don't give a mummer's fart. Again, that's... People here are very straightforward, <laughs> aren't they? Shoo, shoo! Don't bother me. If the Amalja overrun us, I'm blaming you. Oi! <laughs> For me? You shouldn't have. Sorry, a suspicious masked man. As a matter of fact, I caught a glimpse of someone fitting that description during patrol. Well, I couldn't quite make out whether it was a man or not, what with the mask on the robe. But assuming it was a he, he was talking with some Alamigans. I assumed he was one of them. 
Well, that doesn't sound too good. I was about to say, let's return to um, Gundobald, but if he is in league with that mask man, that would explain why he wouldn't want to talk to me either. But n for now, let's talk to Gizilbelt. Ah, you are back. So, did my lookouts have aught to share with you? Hmm, that does not sound like much to go by. If you are to get any further in your investigation, seems to me you'll need the cooperation of the Alamigans. For this, you will need to win their trust and that won't be an easy task. Oh, great. Another circumvented way of getting to the one information I need. Level 25, foot in the door. Giselbert would offer you some advice regarding your investigation. The rewards are 8,160 points of experience, a wood blue dies, and a choice between a heavy iron flanchard for tanks level 25, velveteen sarwell, leg gear, disciples of war level 25, Stripped Velveteen Slopes, or Classes level 25, or an Alagan Silver Piece of a value of 500 gil. So you are determined to press on with your investigation? Then I have some advice to offer. As I said before, you won't get far without the Alamigan's trust, and the best way to win that trust is to get a compatriot of theirs, someone they respect, to vouch for you. Coin does the talking in Ulda, but the Alamigans are bound by something far stronger, if not as tangible, a common purpose. That purpose is, of course, the liberation of their home from the Gallians. Gundobald belongs to the Alamigan resistance, so your best bet would be someone who is part of the same crew. If you know any well-connected people, you might want to start by asking them. Well. As you can see now, uh, our objective is to talk to Minfilia, but also since we've taken the time to get to know the people uh, staying in the Waking Sands, you should have an inkling as to where this is heading and who we are going to talk to next. All right, and in order to return to the Waking Sands, I am going to use one of these new Vesper Bay Etherite tickets. Don't worry, my Chocobo will be following me. <laughs> Imagine if we left the Chocobo alone. At the other end of Sunalan. Nah, I would never do that. Now, the dialogues in the storage area haven't changed, but I've realized I forgot to talk to Thancred earlier. Ah, Ninua, pray do not concern yourself with my welfare. My current investigation has yielded some curious results, and at present I am pondering how best to proceed. Welcome back, Ninua. How fares the investigation? I see. Given all that I have suffered, it is of little wonder that Alamigan refugees have lost faith in their fellow man. They have had their homeland taken from them, and for the past two decades have had to see it remain in the enemy's clutches. To compound matters, none of the three city-states have the means to take in all those who were displaced. As a result, 
a great many El Amigans now live on the margins of society, suffering poverty and discrimination. Would that more could be done to ease their hardship? I fear that nothing short of reclaiming their homeland would be a lasting solution. But let us deal with one problem at a time. Returning to the matter of your investigation, it just so happens there is an Al Amiga native among the Scions. I should be pleased to introduce him to you. Well, actually, <laughs> we, we are already well acquainted. Level 26, meeting with the Resistance. Minfilia wants to introduce you to an Al Amigan member of the Science. The rewards are 9,100 points of experience and a level 24 weapon coffer. Your Al Amigan comrade is named Haldibert. He joined our cause in the hopes that he might find a way to liberate his homeland. While he spares no effort towards that endeavor, I have no doubt that he would be glad to assist you. If I recall correctly, Haribert is currently between missions. Try looking for him in the storage area. Well, he was there about, what, 45 minutes ago? <laughs> He's still there. Incredible. If it isn't Ninua Uzume, the Scion's rising star, is there aught I can do for you? You wish to win the trust of the people of Little Alamigo? That is a daunting task, my friend, even for our own countrymen. I would like nothing more than to help but I'm afraid my name no longer carries weight with that lot. Oh. I used to be a member of the Alamigan Resistance, you see, but I left in favor of joining the science. Though my allegiance may have shifted, my purpose remains ever the same. The liberation of Alamigo. Yet whatever my reasons were, I abandoned my comrades and they will have nothing to do with me. Now. While I may have no more friends in the Resistance, I know someone who does. Her name is Albreda, and she is a resident of Quarry Mill. Say my name when you meet her, and she won't lead you astray. That seems kind of harsh, though. I mean, I understand there are under immense duress but to turn your back on somebody just because he's looking for another way to achieve the same thing that seems somewhat harsh anyways let's return to Gridania and from there head for crime meal from here I'm going to simply teleport that's going to be a bit faster since it's not that expensive and I have almost three three hundred thousand kill eh you want me to introduce you to the Resistance? Ha! Why the hell should I do that? Give me just one reason. H Harry Bird sent you. That was less war, son. He abandons his comrades, his woman, and now he has the gall to ask me for a favor? Simply incredible. I just... I mean... Ah... Oh. I realize Harry Bert was only doing what he felt was right. He is a good man, and if he trusts you, then that's all I need to know. You see that bloke there? 
That's Melfred, a captain of the Resistance. I hope he can give you what you need. And Melfred is just overlooking the river. 1126. Killing him softly. Melfred needs help tending a wounded brother. The rewards are 9,100 points of experience and 1,516 gil. I am Melfred, a proud man of the Alamigan resistance. What business do you have with me, adventurer? Captain, it's it's Galleon, sir. His wound has gone and festered, and he's burning up. I don't think he's got much time. God damn it. I asked the villagers for aid, got on my knees and begged, but they refused to lift a finger. If Galleon dies, his blood is on their hands. These quarry mill cravens would turn a blind eye to our plight, but they might listen to Albreda. I fear my anger will prevent me from rightly convincing anyone at the moment. I realize we scarce know each other, but this is a matter of life and death. Please, adventurer, go to her and try. One of Melfried is in bad shape, you say? I, I'm sorry, but there's no I can do. I want to help, truly I do. They are my countrymen after all, but that would mean going against the Elemental's will. I've been at Quarry Mill long enough to know how right terrible the beings can be. I could not forgive myself if everyone gets banished because of me. If there is anyone who can help you, it would be Charlene, the Hamlet's resident hearer. If you take the matter to her, might be as she'll listen. Though I would not get my hopes up. Well, we can always try. You wish to aid the Alamicans? You are possessed of a kind heart, adventurer, but I am afraid I have not the authority to grant you your wish. This authority belongs only to the Elementals, eternal guardians of the Twelve's Wood. All outsiders, be they babes, at the breast or men grown, are judged overnight, whether they ha may have a place beneath the bow. Alas, the Elemigans' petition has been denied. Harsh though it may seem, they do not have leave to receive of the Wood's bounty. Ever has it been since time immemorial, and ever shall it be. I understand, and I also understand that the elementals are here to preserve the balance of things in the forest and prevent overexploitation, but that sounds a bit harsh, in my opinion, for what it's worth. Mm. That's how it is to be then. The blood hero might as well kill Galleon herself. Spit on the elementals and spit on their bloody will. I cannot wait until the resistance is free of this place. Well, I can understand him. Level 27. Helping harm. Melfred needs your help to save a wounded comrade. The rewards are 10,080 points of experience and a choice between hand gears, heavy iron gauntlets for tanks, level 25, Goatskin ring bands, all classes level 26, or fingerless goatskin gloves, disciples of war level 25, or an Alagan silver piece. I led my men to Quarry Mill hoping to find refuge. Instead, we have found indifference. The cold blooded bastards here want us out, and I can't oblige them soon enough. The problem is, some of mine aren't fit to travel. Hell's Galleon can't even stand. As you well know, the people of this accursed hamlet won't help us, so I have no choice but to turn to you, adventurer. In my homeland, long antelope horn is a traditional remedy 
with poison purging properties. If you could bring me, say, four horns, I'd forever be in your debt. Now, I have a question, and maybe some of you who are familiar with the entire uh, law of the game might know this, but why is it that I can't that I can take those horns that I'm allowed to by the elementals obviously because they don't come here to strike me down or something while nobody else can visibly Because in the end, we achieve the same thing. I don't know, maybe it explain it's explained later, but uh, so far I haven't found the answer. they would probably be all the more upset that I killed one extra <laughs> after getting all four horns. But let's bring them back to Malfred. Ah, you are back. Tell me you've got four horns with you. Long antelope horn. This particular specimen is almost twice as long as a normal horn. How it grew to this size in a single season is baffling. You are a godsend, adventurer. Praise Ralk, there is at least one woman in this place who gives a damn. Now, we just need to find a way to prepare them. You would not happen to know a man named Buscaron, would you? Some comrades of mine told me about him once. They said, he never turns away folk in need, no matter where they are from. Seeing as he runs a tavern, he's like to have the loop tools to make the medicine. I'd be grateful if you could take the horns over to him to have them ground down. When that's done, bring the powder back and give it to Faramud here. Godspeed. Don't we know a man named Buscaron? Let me think. <laughs> He's a very popular man, isn't he? And very well connected as well. Ninua, ever a sight for sore eyes. How fares the adventuring? Rolling in the coin like there is no tomorrow, no doubt. Hmm? You've got something to show me. Well, these look like gold old antelope horns. Need them grown down to make a medicine, you say? Here is a better idea. I'll give you some of the stuff I have in my stores. Aye, I am no stranger to the remedy. An Alamigan friend once used it to treat my festering wound years and years ago. Safe to say, he saved my life. What's that? This is for an Alamigan soldier in Quarry Mill? Heh, <laughs> so it comes full circle. Well, I hope it helps the poor sod as needs it. Oh, and don't worry your little head about the payment. I still owe you a deal more than you owe me, I reckon. He's such a darling.
But yeah, it's funny because Buscaron is also Gudanian, so you would expect him to have to abide by the elemental's will. But he doesn't, <laughs> in that particular respect at least, because we were supposed not to be able to help them. Or is it that he had the, the medicine anyways? And so the elemental, elementals have nothing to say against that. In that case, I've killed four antelopes for nothing. Ouch. Sorry. It is well to see you returned. Have you the medicine for our brother? Herbal ointment. If one is to believe Buscaron, this sore smelling paste from Alamigo will stop a wound from festering. Gods bless you, adventurer. I will see that Galleon receives treatment at once. Hopefully, this will allow the captain to rest easier. It has been a terrible burden on him, trying to keep every man alive. You have done us a great kindness, friend. Level 27. He ain't heavy. Manfred needs your help to find a missing comrade. That escalated rather quickly. The rewards are... 10,080 points of experience, a glamour prism, and a choice between altered goatskin moccasin, foot gear or classes level 26, goatskin crackos, foot gear disciples of war level 25, or an Alagan silver piece. Adventurer, Galleon has gone missing. He's nowhere to be found. He should not be walking about, not with those wounds. If he doesn't get the proper medicine and rest, his conditions is like to deteriorate to where it was before, or worse. We need you to help us find him, and quickly. Start by asking Albreda. Might be he has the woman has seen something. Ah, finally! It's about time you came asking about Galleon. I watched him leave Quarry Mill some time ago, and he left me this sealed letter before he went off. Made me swear not to open it until someone came asking. My brothers, I cannot bear to be a burden any longer. That is why I must leave you all. Do not worry for me. Just find your way safely to little Alamigo. Blast it! Would that I had known what he was thinking, I'd have stopped this folly myself. The love Galleon bears for his brothers is so strong, he's willing to sacrifice himself for them. Make no mistake, entering the wood in his weakened state is suicide. I mean, what did she think that meant? Oh. Out in the wild, alone? That fool. That great, big, sentimental fool. My men and I will scour the wood for Galleon. Please help us find him before something terrible happens. I mean, going back to Albreda, well, logically enough, he ha probably hasn't gone far. But she sees him, knowing how injured he is, walk off, and she couldn't figure out what was going on. Because there aren't that many options. He couldn't go to Little Alamigo alone. It's far too far away. Watch out! A goblin! Oh no, I don't like to hit goblins. But leave me no choice, bro. Galleon! Captain! But 
Why, you should all be on your way. Who do you take us for? We are our Alamigans, and Alamigans never forsake one another. Hardships be damned. Remember the oath we swore, God damn it. The oath to reclaim our homeland. We'll set foot on Alamigan soil again, together, or not at all. Do you understand me? Yes, sir. Good. Let us return to our brothers. Oh, and don't even think that you'll get off lightly. As soon as you are healed, I'll give you such a thorough trashing, you'll wish we didn't find you. <laughs> oh. I can't thank you enough for saving Galleon. I will see you back at Quarry Mill. Not to mention, he was heading towards an area where the level of enemies, so Uth gift, so the uh, level of enemies there is starting at 45. So if he had gone there, I would have been unable to do anything to help, quite frankly. Galleon's expected to make a full recovery. We'll linger here till he is strong enough to take the road again. As much as I mislike this place, beggars can't be choosers. Eleven twenty-seven. Come highly recommended. Melfred wishes to repay your kindness. The rewards are ten thousand eighty points of experience and two hundred and sixty gil. Now that things are relatively settled, I seem to recall that you wanted something of me. You've proven a true friend to my people. Ask of me anything, and it is yours, so long as it is mine to give. The cooperation of the people of Little Alamigo? That's all? Far be it from me to question your desires, of course. Very well, I will provide you with a letter to show to Gundobald. The old bear was my mentor when I first joined the Resistance. He is intimidating to those who don't know him, but he takes care of his own. I have no doubt that he will do all in his power to aid you. So Gundabald was his mentor. Well, that's one lucky coincidence. Okay, so there are quite a few side quests around and I'm going to pick this one. Level 26, Savage Snares. Balan of the Wood Whalers at Quarry Mill seeks an adventurer to help him settle the score with some poachers. The rewards are 2,275 points of experience and 1,474 gil. Greetings, adventurer. Perhaps you have heard, but these forests have fallen prey to a band of poachers. They litter the ground with dastardly snares, caring not a whit for the innocents, small animals and travelers alike, caught in their vile clutches. I am forbidden to leave my post, but perhaps you could scour the area and see to any ghastly still moes that you encounter. Be careful. The poachers themselves may be lying in ambush, awaiting their prey. So I'm going to accomplish this as a lancer. And there is no particular reason for me to pick up this quest. I just wanted to do at least one to start clearing up the area a little bit.
Sometimes I still forget I have a chocobo <laughs> to carry me a bit faster. You've done good work today, friend. Still, with that self-styled King of the Kirklos running the operations, the poachers are not like to yield easily, no. We must be more vigilant than ever. And that King of the Curl Clothes features in a fate that occurs all the way northeast of the South Shroud. And this is one of these fates that are a bit more difficult than their level suggests, and I will take care of those after we complete the MSQ 2.0. All right, so I am going to stop things here uh, because once we return with the letter to Gundobald, uh, thing events are going to accelerate quite a bit. So I think this is a good place and the mini arc is too long to do in just one video. So we are going to return to Little Alamigo and continue this mini arc next time. In the meantime, I wish you all a great day, a wonderful week ahead and until next time, bye bye.